ninth edition of the Boa Arts and Literature Festival the first day with this very special event. Um, I, these are two friends who have known each other for many, many, many years and I do not want to interfere in their conversation and dialogue, but I can't resist saying a couple of things. One is, yesterday, those who did not see and hear Chasti uh, Deshpande's speech, um, please check it out when it comes online in a day or two. It was uh, something highly unusual. It was something it it made it more or less typical of Shashi, I think, but it's very unusual in our times to hear that kind of speech, um, really from uh, which touched all the notes that you could possibly want. Yeah. Why do we do a literature festival? This is a question constantly on my mind. Dr. Malzo and I ask it to each other. At midnight, sometimes I ask it to myself. Sometimes when my wife is on the verge of throwing the my cell phone out of the car, she screams it to me, why the Fritter Festival, why the Festival? The answer is because of moments like that, moments of the kind we had yesterday, which was utterly transcendent, but it's all the power of literature and the ability of, for ideas to be um, transcendent. Um, Damodar Mauzo has this lovely phrase, as you know, Damodar Mauzo here, wherever he walks, the beloved company writer was followed at some distance by a armed guard uh, commander who was, uh, who was given to him, forced upon him by the state because he showed up on a hit list. Um, Damodar Mauzo had this lovely phrase, a bullet cannot stop a boat, um, which is, but here, here we are, um, luckily in an environment without bullets and only thoughts. I would also like to say a particular thank you to both of these uh, wonderful writers and wonderful writers for for the world that is that partly they evoke and that is evoked in the beginning of this book, really marvelous book. And that is the world of Dharwar, uh, a time which is significant to Goa, significant to this whole part of India, indeed to India overall, but certainly to this part of India where Dharwar was an educational center of great repute and thousands of students uh, streamed through Dharwar, certainly many people from Goa and part of my own family. But so this is kind of a homecoming and uh, a gathering of great meaning. So welcome Shashi, thank you so much. This is the exclusive launch of uh, Shashi Deshpande's book uh, in, in, in a conversation with, with our Kuto, who doesn't require much of an introduction to Kian Goa, but she is uh, our most noted writer. She, uh, in English, she is also the recipient of the Padmashri, and those who have not read her absolutely wonderful books should do so. They are on sale outside. So welcome. things that have not been always 
appreciated in, by the Indian leadership of English literature is the special quality that Shashi's sensibility brings to the writing of English fiction. And that is that she's grounded in classical Indian literature, she's grounded in Marathi and Kannada speaking literature and so forth. And then she combines this with reading of the best of world literature, not just English literature. So I could go on, but Shashi starts with Darbar. And if we begin with Darbar, we might not end with anything except Darbar. <laughs> so I would like Shashi to say what she likes to say about book and the, and the, the life in Darbar, or what has contributed to her writing from Darbar. Actually, writing about my early childhood was the easiest. I've heard uh, my mother say that as you grow older, you remember the past, the, you know, the long past, much easier. And I find that I remember the past easier than I do yesterday, for example. I don't remember five minutes ago when I get my glasses. But when I started writing my school, and, uh, you know, our life in Narmad came back to me so easily. And it was such a delight to write because I think all uh, books about childhood come out very well. Because there's an innocence about the person about the child that you were, which comes through in the writing. I read my father's autobiography, and his, uh, the parts where he speaks of his childhood have the innocence of something narrated by a child. And I think that's what uh, I hope came into my book. And Dharma, of course, as Vivek said, as Aurora said, it's a very special place. It was a, a sort of a center for learning for that part of India. People came from Goa did not have English education, then it was Portuguese. So we had a huge number of families from Goa. And for us, you know, Goa, Goa and people from Goa and the church were all part of us. We almost partly uh, Catholics ourselves because when we saw them all going for confession, we thought we should also confess. We didn't know whom to confess to. And, uh, you know, we used to tell us, our friends that we go around the temple and at that time we confess. <coughs> It was a great influence in my childhood, uh, the school, the church, friends like Aurora, and uh, the freedom we had. And I think, you know, Aurora, what I loved most was talking about how we were taught English, and uh, the poetry that came to me in my school, and the poetry which taught me about English language. I did not know that I would enjoy the poetry so much later. But I think that is now what I think, that it was the poetry which taught me the beauty of the language, though I read mostly fiction. <coughs> so I think that part was extremely uh, easy to write, joyful to write. And, uh, you know, I mean, if I go to Dharva now, I think I won't find that place. Because the places in my mind were not actually there. Dharva, I knew was gone. So I think for me, this was a recreation. And like I said, every book that I have written, Dharva comes in. So uh, every novel of mine is, is a place which is somewhat like Dharma, most so in the country of Brazil, and uh, it's like the same town, but I'm sure it's not. So it has not left me, which is what Arnold always says. I left Dharma, but here it has not left me. Everything I write about goes back there. Right? I think it happens to many authors. Exactly. When Girish Kavna Karnat released my book, he said many times that this book is a product of Dharma and Goa. So I think that's what she's saying. She's got a sentence in the book which says, I thought that by leaving Dharma, I was leaving Dharma, but Dharma has never left me. Uh, apart from that, of course, she talks with great passion about the passion that has illuminated her life. I'll just read it. There's another thing in my life that has lifted it out of me and has illuminated it. It is a passion for words, for language, for stories, for reading, and much later for writing, which transformed my life. You talk about that, and also read the fantasy in 268, I think. What I've read here is in response to a question I was often asked when I started writing, not a question, a statement. It's a very good hobby. Too normal, and the person actually did not do that. But you know, it, 
it sort of haunted me all my life. And why? When my father worked, it was work. When I worked, it was work. So one of the things I want to lay upset here, writing is hard work, steady work, disciplined work. There is an idea that writing comes out of inspiration, followed by quick and totally satisfying streams of writing. I wish it happened this way. It does happen, but very rarely. Brief flashes of illumination cannot make an entire novel. The novel needs substance, body to hold these flashes together. This can only come through steady work, through, through constantly struggling to get where you want to. It means rewriting and rewriting and more rewriting, so that often, I think always, you're sick of your own work. It means deleting not only words, sentences, and passages, but it has huge chunks. You have worked very hard at writing. But as far as I was concerned, it mattered to me to write. Because it didn't say, other people did seem to think it was important, but at no point in my writing life did I ever think that what I was doing was not important. It was important to me to say what I wanted to. It mattered to me to write, and as I later found out, it mattered to many of my readers to read what I wrote. And in spite of all these things, I mean the kind of uh, putting you down, that so many women did write, that they continued to write and to be published in spite of knowing that their gender doomed them to be regarded as less important writers, show the kind of courage which has to be admired. I think that's the courage I admired in women writers. We are doomed to be an insignificant and marginalized writer, but you don't stop writing because of that. Legitimacy and get identified for what it is. 
struggle of an oppressed people. This struggle, the struggle of women to consider equal human beings, is part of my story. Or rather, I am a part of it as an insider, as an observer, and as a observer. Hindi, there's no anger against Hindi. 
And this is the kind of HR we can do without work. I think we have gone too far now. I find our politicians, I mean, I blame politicians for almost everything that goes wrong. And I think, I think I'm justified because without politicians, people would not have hated the other language.